Hello everybody, I'm back with another Pioneer video. This time I'm going to be trying out Seasons Past. Um, just straight up black-green. Um, I've been a fan of this archetype um, a lot recently. I think it has um, some pretty good merits. Um, uh, it's been performing pretty well for me. Um, mainly it's really good against the combo decks as you have you know your dark petitions to search up your necromentias or various other things like that. Um, it is a little bit fragile to the more aggressive decks, um, so that's why I have put some more removal on the main deck in the form of these um, uh, three sweepers uh, with Extinction Event and Languish, then the Heartless Act, Blood Chief's Thirst, Fatal Push, and then um, Decay and Trophy um, as to kind of catch all removal, catch all removal spells. Um, other than that, I am opting for these five green spells in the three drop slot. Um, I really like Cultivate because they play it on turn three, and say so you play like one of these um, uh, one or two drops on turns one or two, you could guarantee a Dark Petitions, or a, sorry, a Dark Petition with Spell Mastery on turn five, um, as you have the two lands from the Cultivate. So I really like that, and just the one Tireless Tracker is kind of like a Flex spot that's flex spot that's pretty good. Um, likewise with Nissa, um, the ramp elements that she provides is really good as well. And then as the top end, I have Professor Onyx and Garrick, Cursed Huntsman. Um, been really impressed by both of them. Garrick is a bit better against aggro, and Onyx is a bit better against um, control or combo. Then for the sideboard, against aggro, we have. Collective Brutality, Legion's End, and Noxious Grasp. Um, then for a control um, or combo, all right, let's start with the control. So against control, we have Carnage Tyrant, Ugin, and Tireless Tracker, and Thoughtseize. Um, and then against combo, we have the Necromentias and Thoughtseize. And even the Collective Brutality can come in. Let's get Instance or Sorceries. And then just the one Graveyard Trespasser, um, just kind of a kind of flex spot in the sideboard. It's good against mid-range, good against aggro. Um, yeah. Um, other than that, I, uh, that was the deck deck, and I'll see you guys for the matches. Okay, so we're here for round one. Um, our opponent took a, quite a while on their uh, turn one, um, but they're on a Luris deck with a Champion of the Parish, Perished. Um, so I think we're just going to... Blood Chiefs thirst that. But yeah, I cut out the uh, beginning of the match just because they took a while. Wars of Zombies, interesting. Okay, Agadim's Awakening, Crypt Breaker. Okay, sure. So, let this all happen, then in the turn I will get a forest, and then, depending on what we draw, Probably either cultivate or heartless act on the crypt breaker.
Yeah, it definitely seems like our opponent's doing something. Okay, so we did not draw a third land. So I guess yes. Yeah, I suppose I will do this. It doesn't feel the best because they can activate it now. Um, but I think it's the correct choice. Just kind of try to limit their card advantage as much as possible. Yep. Another corpse, Nate. Okay, get drained for a bunch. Okay, so I guess pretty easy play of Bantu's Last Reckoning. Hopefully they don't have some type of like, you know, return effect like a, uh, what's it called, Rally the Ancestors, Re Ancestors, Return the Ancestors, something like that. Cartel Aristocrat, that's, that's pretty sweet. Hmm. And Lyris into hand. Okay, the only thing we can do is pass the turn. So they can play Lyris and get back maybe like a Corpse Knight or a Reaver. This is a really cool card, though. Okay, they play Lyris. <clears throat> I wonder if they're double queuing or something. And then they get back. Let's see what they get back. Would really like to draw a land or some other removal spell. Okay, they do take the Reaver. Or maybe like a um, good extinction event, languish. Okay, Abrupt Decay, not bad, um, so if we go uh, Cultivate into de Decay on the Lurus, then we take 4, go down to 1, then we're not really looking too good from there, otherwise we could try to play Kalidus, and hopefully don't, hope they don't have a removal spell. Yeah, I think that's the uh, 
highest likelihood of us winning if we take this in line. So like hopefully they just like sacrifice this to or sacrifice a token to uh, attack with this and then next turn we could destroy Luris. Jeez, what a uh, turn of events. And let's see if they see the line. I mean, we're dead on board anyways, but... Or actually, no, we're not. If they go like this, then... We take four, yeah, we're at one now. Uh, doesn't. Oh, okay. I see the sacrifice first. Okay, sweet. Cool, cool. Um, so against this deck, probably want these cards. Um, take out a couple thought seizes. The necromancia. And maybe like one gold blank. Maybe an onyx as well. Bring in like a graveyard trespasser. I think this looks good. Gets be on the play. I always wonder what you know our opponents are doing when they take this long to make decisions. It has to be just either playing another game, double you know, multitasking, something like that. It is kind of annoying though. It's just wasting people's time. I've also noticed this is just a very small thing. Not that it matters too much. But I've noticed, I always say good luck to my opponents each game. Um, and probably like 25% of them respond. Just a little you know, interesting thing I've noticed. Definitely, um, Magic Online is much different than paper. Just in, like, the, uh, manner in which people interact with others. Okay, I'll keep this. Probably lead on Fabled Passage for a swamp. The opponent moves to six. But you have to think, like, they have 12 minutes on the clock. Um, if we win this game, then, you know, they may not have enough time to play a game three. So, never know.
But it never works out that way, right? <laughs> they always get you with like 10 seconds on the clock and they always feel so bad. But that's just the way things work sometimes. So they brought in Collective Brutality, which is kind of interesting, um, I guess we just pass here. I'll just kill this now. Okay, um, let's go with a. I mean, if we go with Nissa, we could guarantee Kalidus next turn. But if we go with Trespasser, we could get the Servant out of the graveyard. I think I'll go with Nissa. I think hitting our land drops is a bit more important than uh, getting the uh, type of, I guess, board presence that Trespasser would provide. Okay, another servant and crypt breaker. I would like to talk about the um, bans, or I guess lack thereof, in Pioneer, um, with the uh, ban announcement for, what was it, just Legacy, Standard, and I guess uh, Historic got ch the changes for like Teferi and other cards. Um, I, you know, I was I feel like it makes sense, so I'm just going to go Cletus here really quick. It definitely makes sense that they wouldn't change anything to, um, to Pioneer, I think it's perfectly fine as is. Um, but I think they're 
I think Lurus is definitely, um, you know, it it still provides a diversity of decks to play with, um, but it still kind of mitigates certain cards that you could play. Uh, basically, you know, any three drop plus is, you know, you kind of have to really examine again, like, you know, to, to take a you know double take to really see if it's worth it to play that over um, you know any type of uh, Lurus deck basically um, and so you know with that it's kind of a struggle and like the inevitability of Lurus is just kind of annoying and you know very old and boring uh, quite frankly um, so yeah, I, would, I think I would definitely like to see a Lurus ban. Um, but, uh, not really sure if they're, they're willing to do that. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's fine. They could, you know, uh, banning Treasure Cruise is also a consideration. Um, just for like the Ascendancy and Phoenix decks. Just so that those decks, you know, kind of, um, their consistency gets diminished just a bit. Attacking with Cletus just to gain some life here. And then I'm going to kill this servant. And then I think. I could either kill the other servant on their draw step or um, just play Trespasser. I think. Yeah, I'll put a trespasser just so we have some more blockers. Sure. But yeah, there's always the um, option of banning treasure crews. Um, you know, to make those blue decks a, a bit less consistent. Uh, but I, I do think their sticks are just so old, so. You know, this might be a little bit of, boom, of a boomer take, but just it provides so much inevitab inevitability and consistency to certain decks that, you know, basically, you know, all aggressive decks play Lurus, you know, and is that really a thing that we want in the format? I feel like there should be, you know, at least more of a conversation held there. But whatever. So, if their plan is to just play a bunch of zombies and, you know, get a bunch of triggers off of the servant, I think I'm you know, pretty happy with that. Because, uh, you know, like, let's, like, let's just attack with the Kalidus again, gain some life. Um, because we could, you know, really easily just, uh, um, trophy or, you know, kill the uh, serpent. But yeah, our opponent already is down to five minutes, so if we do win this game, then, um, you know, it's going to be pretty hard for them to uh, keep up in game three. So they could double block here. Yeah, so if they're, if they're doing that, then I could just kill the champion. Looks like they may have realized that. And then... Yeah, I think I will draw step the uh, servant with trophy. this oh okay so then you play rally the ancestries okay interesting i wonder why they would 
discard that. Maybe they just have multiple in hand. Can I do another one? Okay, discard another rally, so it seems they have multiple in hand and they're just trying to get the triggers out now. So we can. I mean, I think I might just murder a rider this. I'll jump block for now. And then before damage, I'll swift end. Just in case they have some sort of trick here. Okay, and they conceded. Yeah, so they had, what, 3.45 on the clock, so it's going to be pretty hard for them to get back into it. Um, anything to change? I think it's fine. I think I like this configuration. We have so many removal spells right here. Jeez. That's when you know you're, you're a mid-range player. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's see if they can win this game in three and a half minutes. Okay, this is a keepable hand. Um, the true trophies is a bit concerning. Um, just, uh, you know, giving them land is not the best, but we'll see how it goes. I never like, you know, playing the game to time them out, you know, just kind of prolonging it as much as possible. But, you know, if they're, if they're going to do this, then it is, you know, part of the mechanic in Magic Online. Okay, Decay is a nice draw. And I didn't mention this in the deck tech, but the reason why I'm playing so many trophies and decay, so you know, three trophies, two decays, is basically ascendancy. Um, ascendancy is so popular that uh, it's just really uh, pretty necessary to play that split. And there are a lot of decks that play uh, very few basic lands, and so a trophy just you know gets that much better. So I'll leave up my removal spells now. See what they do. Not really sure what I want to kill just yet. It's probably gonna be the champion. Yeah. I guess I could let this resolve then. <laughs> they do get a bunch of triggers with the Corpse Knight, but I, th I don't think we can worry about that just yet. Um, but yeah, sure. And this also, if we, uh, you know, take out their one drop, then the extinction event on even gets that much better. Okay, so here, um, you know, I think I'll just leave up Trophy for the Corpse Knight. I think that's the wisest decision. 
since we already got the fourth land drop for extinction event, we don't need to play out Nissa. So yeah, I think we'll just pass the turn. And then, um, like trophy, I guess we could have, we could trophy in the draw step, but I think I'd like to just do it in response to whatever they play. Just to play around any like rally the ancestors or something like that. Collective brutality. Discarded planes. Drained for two. Look at my hand. Okay, you know that's pretty good. So I'm guessing they'll take the extinction event. Mm -hmm. And then I will now kill the corpse knight. Mill over a crypt breaker. But I mean the one minute twenty seconds left. Not much time. But it is some time. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I, I mean... Huh. You know, I think I will just play the Nyssa. Um, it, uh... You know, it can die to a collective brutality. But I honestly think that's fine. They, If they do that, you know, they hit me for three. And, you know, that's not the end of the world. Whoopsies. Okay, sure, it's fine as well. So hit me for three. I just have one card left in hand. So I'm not too worried. Dark petition is really nice. So we could petition, say, for... I wonder what we would get. Maybe just even like a murderous rider that we just play, um, you know, as a creature. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty safe. <laughs> I mean, it's either that or. Maybe a go blank is a bit more safe, just because it plays around rally the ancestors. Although I guess they do need to draw planes plus rally, but they may have rally in hand. I mean, they discarded the planes to the brutality, so I'm not really sure. Um, I wonder what the safest option is. Maybe it's just graveyard trespasser. You know what? Yeah. I th yeah, I think that is the safest option, actually. Get the Corpse Knight out, then pass the turn. So, yeah, that's where we gain some life and get a, have a blocker. So, I guess we could block the token. into hand and float a white man <laughs> okay okay um, so if we attack we can exile their only two creatures so Lurus gets a lot worse um, and then we could hold up Double trophy. I guess so. I mean, we could, I guess we can uh, thought cease as well, but taking the two life is a bit not that good. So yeah, I'll just leave up the trophies. Again, just playing it very safely.
Looks like they're tapping and realizing that they don't have any creatures in their graveyard. <laughs> okay, so a bit of a lengthy match there, but we got it. Um, yeah, I think that goes to show how good, um, you know, just how, I guess, controlling this deck is, uh, especially against these Lurus decks. But yeah, I'll see you guys for round two. Okay, here for round two. We are on the play with a pretty good hand, keep, against Gigantha, so probably means Ascendancy. Yeah, looks like it. So I think I'll just play another Quagmire tapped. I don't think we need to um, leave up Trophy Chest yet. Consider. Yep. Okay. Decay is also very good. Um, honestly, we could put the Nissa here. Um, yeah. Because if their next turn is just play Ascendancy, do nothing, then, you know, there's no really difference from, or there's no difference between playing or killing the Ascendancy on their end step than our next turn. At least that's the way I see it. Okay, so they don't have Ascendancy just yet. Or they're choosing not to play it. So we could just attack and see what happens. So I do think Ascendancy is a good matchup for this deck. I think I've only lost against it like once. Um, okay, opt. You know, it's a you know classic combo mid-range matchup. And you know, if we get the pieces in line, then you know the disruptive disruptive pieces that is, then we're really able to. Uh, you know, steal the game off pretty well. <laughs> Ascendancy here? Oh, interesting. Okay. Sure. Be my guest. So I I wonder what they what they're playing then. Um yeah. So just play a field of ruin. Because Ascendancy usually doesn't play Feral Spiral, right? Maybe this is like the uh, Almoth version of Ascendancy? Uh, I'm not sure though. I'm not really doing that much though, so don't really care too much. Put Chagantha to hand. Okay. Okay, uh, I think I'm just gonna extinction event on even. Um, scratch the bottom. Uh, so this limits their or the potential of their ascendancies. Okay, just play Gotha. Sure. Breeding pool tapped. And then we could trophy it. And so this also turns on our Dark Petition with Spill Mastery. Which I guess is not too relevant right now. Um, 
because we don't have any <laughs> three mana spells to play off of it this turn. Um, but I mean, we can get like a go blank. be interesting you know what yeah I'll get a go blank I was it was either that or seasons past um, uh, but uh, you know it's always kind of weird so they are ascendancy okay it's always kind of weird getting seasons past and you know not having anything else to kind of interactive spells to play right after um, kind of feels a bit bad okay so there's ascendancy And, okay, I'll just kill it on the end step. So there goes two ascendancies out of the deck. Fabled Passage, sure. I guess I could start hitting them with the uh, Quagmires. And so I chose go blank there because it turns off uh, Treasure Cruise, which would be another great draw for them. Okay, Expressive Iteration, that's a good draw. So interesting, I'll have to look up, um, get Breeding Pool, I'll have to look up the deck list for the Omnath version of this Ascendancy deck. Um, because I'm not sure if that's what this is or not. Okay, Thoughtseize was a good draw. <laughs> See what they got going. Okay, uh, I think I'll just take the Awakening. Um, yeah, pretty scary card actually. With how many lands I have. Carry it, okay. Hello Fountain tapped. Got it. Okay, sweet. There's the seasons past. So we could crack a Fable Passage. Get a uh, swamp, let's say. Then go for the seasons past. Zero. One. Uh, two. Three. And then let's thought seize them. See what they got going. Just to change the rocks and two lands. Okay. So yeah, should be pretty good from here on out. <laughs> Consider sure. Kept whatever is on top. Okay, fine. <laughs> Hello, Fountain. Okay, I guess we could just start by... Uh, now, let's start by... Um, Dark Petition for Seasons Past again, and then use the Spell Mastery Mana to, um, to play the Go Blink. Discard, okay, two lands. Um, okay, I'll pass the turn now. Well, hmm. You know, I, I think I will go like one more time. I'm pretty scared of a Sylvan Awakening. Um, and this plays around that. Obviously, they would have to top deck that, but we, there's no way of playing around that. 
And they did have it in hand. Okay, geez. Good draw. So they've gone through two awakenings, right? Yeah. And three ascendancies. Found a foundry. Right? Three ascendancies. Maybe just two. Okay, um, so we can could play Seasons Past, I guess that's just the right play, zero, one, uh, three, four, and five. And then I suppose now we can thought seize again, just see what they have in hand. Yeah. Change the rocks, okay. And then pass the turn. So, yeah, they're just top decking now, which is good. And so I think. Oh yeah, I was going to Dark Petition for the Necromancer, but I think this is going to seal the deal. Name, Sylvan Awakening. Rip, sweet. They conceded. <laughs> um, okay, so against Ascendancy combo, definitely want the Necromancers. And these uh, discard spells. Then what we could cut, Kalidus, probably the Garrick, a uh, Blood Chief's Thirst, Heartless, uh, let's, this, actually the Fatal Pushes are a bit worse. And then maybe you want some trackers, uh, uh, actually. So the they probably bring in Monastery Mentor, so I still want some of these removal spells that don't hit Ascendancy. Um, and these Wraths are always good against Mentor as well, or Awakening lands that, you know, obviously don't kill us. So yeah, I think I think this is good. Draw Thought sees triple trophy. We have two draws to draw a second land. I'm gonna keep it. I'm greedy, so I'm gonna keep it. <clears throat> this could be wrong, but I mean, just triple trophy against this deck, it has to be insane. Swamp. Okay, did not hit the land, but we can't thought seize. Okay, so I guess we have to take. Wow, well, what a hand, by the way. <laughs> Jeez. I guess we have to take the ascendancy. Uh, yeah. It feels bad, obviously, but um, I think it is the correct choice. And I'm saying it feels bad because, you know, we have four ways to remove it in our hands, but we can't really let them do that right now. Okay, Sacred Foundry. Okay, I mean, <laughs> it's not a land, but it's, we could still play it. I mean, Treasure Cruise is pretty bad, but I think... I kind of just have to take the awakening. 
it's just too scary of a card to let them have. What is this? Okay, it's just treasure cruise. So they're back up to seven cards in hand. Jeez, okay. Um, I guess put back a dark petition. It's pretty unlucky though. interesting. I wonder what they could have. Okay, they just put your content in hand. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Um, I guess now put back probably a trophy. <laughs> I mean, somehow we're still in this game, right? <laughs> Yep, there's the Chikantha. Okay, I mean, it's something. It's not a land, but it's something. Okay, uh, probably take the Aether Gust. Gets around the, you know, uncounterable decay and our other interaction spells. Scry to the bottom. Breeding pool in the graveyard. Okay, there's the monastery mentor. Silence, sure. So quite the unlucky game for us. Um, you know, I felt like it was an okay keep, but you know, I, I, when you whenever you have something like that, it's always obvious thereafter about what you were supposed to do. But it's fine. Um, for game three, uh, You know, I guess um, Noxious Grasp is a bit better than Fatal Push, because it hits both Gigantha and Mentor. Huh. I actually never thought of that before. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll keep it like this, probably. Mm, I'll take a, a push and put a Tracker back in. Okay, hopefully I have a good hand this time. Okay, yeah, I could keep that. Okay, just take a sentence here. So we can Brutality now to uh, take the Treasure Cruise. I think I'll do it now because next turn I would like to play Nissa anyways. And I'll just do the one mode. Scry to the top, okay. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Dang, that's not good. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess the best we could do is just pass the turn. I'll leave black back a blocker just in case. I don't think two damage is going to be that much. Do that, do that much. But yeah, letting them have an ascendancy for return is not good. It's pretty lucky of them to draw into it as well. Keeping in mind we already took one from them. Okay, Hallow Fountain. Curated. Oh, nice. Okay. I think I'm just gonna do that right now. Sweet. That was an outstanding draw. And they do not have any basics. Good to keep in mind. So it's three expressive iterations, two ascendancies out of their deck, one treasure cruise. Doing pretty good so far. Would like to see like a, a dark petition would be insane, obviously. Um, yeah, Necromancer. Label of Passage, not so much. So I think I, I'll attack. Um, the next turn, maybe we could like Fable Passage, flip in this earth, and just languish the carrier to the way so they can't like net any mana if they draw another ascendancy. I have to wonder what they have in hand though. Well, I guess that could answer the question. Um, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do this first. Gust Nissa. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Um, so the reason why I didn't activate it is because I wanted to languish first, then activate, but I, I this is fine. Um, I think I will put it on the bottom though. Sylvan Awakening, Sylvan Awakening. Hmm. I guess I'll take one of the Sylvan Awakenings and then in that case I won't play the Languish. It's pretty scary though. Opt. Scratch the bottom. Crossbar with no land. Consider putting Karyatid in the graveyard and then Chikampa into hand. Okay, pretty interesting that they didn't play the Awakening. I guess they're saving it for the combo. Okay, there's a Decay, that's good. So we have the Heartless Act for the Chikampa if they want to do that, and then Decay for Ascendancy. Cycle Trion. Consider Triome in the graveyard. Foundry untapped. Jagantha. Leaving up three mana. I wonder what for. Okay. 
Okay. I guess Psycho Triumph probably, yeah. Jeez, I was waiting for that one. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think I just want to name Sylvan Awakening because we already have the decay for any sentences that they can draw. Um, it gives them a 2-2. Two -two. I don't think that's too much of a worry right now. We can always languish if needed. Okay, so get that, get that. They have Radiant Flames and Silence in their hand. And they have two mentors to win with, but that's it. And then one Ascendancy left. Okay, so it's Silence, Radiant Flames. Should I languish right now? I probably. Maybe not. Yeah, I'll just pass the turn. It's not necessary. That's a nice draw. Okay, um, I, yeah, I'll just play it out. This will serve as a blocker anyway, so we don't need language. And this is why I was holding up the Fable Passage. And I think I'll crack it now, see what we get. Feel the ruin. Okay. And then we'll pass the turn. It looks like they're just going to pass. Thoughtseize. Okay, I guess I'll start with that. Mm, I'll start with the cemetery. But yeah, then that, that's um, sacrifice clue. Okay, that's some good insurance. Let's see what they have. Oops. Um, I'll take the silence. Yeah, I think that's the only card that could, you know, somewhat make this game go wrong. And then I guess I could start attacking. Okay, that was a good draw. So again, they just have the one Ascendancy and the two Mentors that they can win with so far. Okay, there's a Treasure Cruise. Another Treasure Cruise, okay.
pretty cool. Untapped. What could that mean? Curated. It's kind of weird when they have it untapped. Another tracker is really good. I think I'll start by attacking. Yep, they block. Um, I'll play a tracker. Get a clue from activating field of ruin on a trial. And then I think I'll set up the kill for next turn with a languish. I mean, they do have seven cards in hand, so. Okay, I think I'll pass the turn, leaving up Decay and Trophy. I really wonder how they can win from this, though. <laughs> okay, Ascendancy. Okay, treasure cruise. Oh, uh, shoot. I did not mean to uh, do that. I forgot those are auto yielded. Um, but yeah, let's do this now. Okay. I think, yeah, I'll just let this happen. If we trophy, they could just keep on playing instance, so it doesn't really do much. So they could get their zombie really big here. Okay, and the results. They have eight cards in their library. Green pool untapped again, which is kind of weird. Radiant flames for three. Um, yeah, I'll let that resolve. Attack for four. This is pretty dicey. <laughs> so if we Crack two clues. Tracker will be it. Okay. Sorry, just let me do this 
a quick I'm just going to do this now. Mystical dispute. Okay. Sure. Okay, so if we correct the two clues, tracker becomes a seven, sorry, an eight, seven, and that's exactly lethal. Because we've got minus four, minus four from that. Yeah, this, this looks to be good. this up. Languish. Attack for five. Nice. Okay, that one felt really good. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, this goes to show how good Seasons Pass is against Ascendancy. Um, you know, just having the Necromancha's, you know, one main deck, but, you know, really four with the Dark Petition is just phenomenal. Um, and then, you know, post sideboard, we have tools against what they bring in, you know, mentors, things like that. And yeah, it feels really good. You know, winning with tracker, just straight up mid range awesomeness. Um, but yeah, uh, that was awesome. I'll see you guys for round three. Okay, here for round three. The a keepable hand. Sorry if there's any uh, background noise. I am recording in a new setup, uh, so there might be some external noises. So I do apologize for that, but hopefully we could get some good matches in. Really happy with the deck so far. Um, beat that uh, always have Lurus ag aggressive zombie deck, which is really nice, and then beating Ascendancy is um, you know always really nice as well. I think just lead on small up here. The uh, Mulligan's 2-6, did I see that correctly? Yeah, looks like it. Okay, uh, thought the is nice. Okay, so it looks like just blue-white control. In that case, I think I'll just take the Narset. So I think control is uh, an okay matchup. They could definitely take the game away pretty easily if we are not careful. But other than that, it's it's fine. I think I'll hold up the field here. Cycle the farmland. See if we can get them off white, or at least double white. Okay, there's double white. Consider, okay. Put a hole in the graveyard. Okay, so it seems like they may not have any planes, which is good. I think here, um, I guess I'll just play a castle. Cycle of the sensor. Okay. Okay, there's the planes. So they play at least one, which is good to know. Just 
pass the turret again. Really want to draw like a Professor Onyx, Garrick, and hopefully be able to resolve it. Some memory deluge, maybe? Or Shark Typhoon. To clear time, okay. So don't really care too much about what they're doing now. Just as long as they're not resolving any big planeswalkers. Like if they just keep on, you know, passing the turn, then I think we're pre in pretty good shape. There's it. Okay. I think I will try to kill that. Okay. Nice. To get a consider and fast the turn. Okay, I think I'll just play the Murderous Rider and then just pass the turn and leave up Assassin's Trophy. Keep the card on top. Fairy. Attempt to kill that. Nice. Okay, island. Okay, um. I think I'll just attack into the seal away. Just make them use it, make them use their mana. And then I think maybe we could start drawing cards with Castle. Okay, we don't use the seal away quite yet. Typhoon, okay. We'll attempt to kill that. Nice. And then now we get castle pretty nicely. Okay, that sees is good. Um, so I guess I'll just take the seal away. Just let them have the vetoes. Interesting that they did. They chose not to veto our trophy last turn. I don't really know why they would want to not do that. Okay, uh, activate castle. Go blank is good as well. In case they do run two planes or more. These castles could be start could start to become problems. Okay, I think I'll start by Go blanking them. Veto, sure. Supreme Verdict. Um, sure, I'll let that resolve. Okay, so it looks like their hand is just Veto and Fountain. 
Not drawing any uh, notable cards though, just kind of worrisome. So, the one top, one bottom. Went through one to ferry, one shark typhoon. Maybe they have the top to shark typhoon or something like that. Maybe another counter spell. This is not bad. Absorb? Yeah, okay, sure. So just veto in hand. Leaving up the Fable Passage for a uh, Tylus Tracker. One top, one bottom again. Just pass the turn. The top is probably another, you know, Shark Typhoon or Counterspell. Missing Quagmire was actually not bad of a draw. One top, one bottom again. Make a token. I think I'll try to push this now. Just let it resolve. Okay, let's start by firing up the quagmire. And then I could just hold the swamp. Just in case uh, we draw a tracker. With these vetoes in hand, um, you know, drawing a uh, which I'm gonna call it, Dark Petition or Seasons Past isn't the best. They went uh, one bottom, one top again. Okay, nice. That's pretty good. The fairy is really good. Okay, um, I think we could concede there. We have a pretty good advantage. Let's go to game two. So for game two, let's bring in the big uh, Haymakers. Tracker's amazing. So is Carnage Tyrant. Could bring in Necromentia. I think just having the one main deck is fine though, just against like Teferi. Definitely want Thoughtseize. Some maybe some brutalities as well. I think the uh, wraths and Cletus is could or Cletus could go. Uh, maybe Heartless Act. Maybe we want an extra trespasser uh, instead of the Bantu's last breaking up. Yeah, I think this is fine. Having the four push is kind of iffy. Um, but, you know, they still do play Shark Typhoon. So maybe we do want to just bring in a Brutality just for the duress effects. Okay, keep this. Swamp. Uh, 
Let's see if this resolves. Ether Ghost. Um, huh. That's interesting. I think I'll bottom it. Um, it's it's kind of you can make a um, you can make a case for keeping it on, on top, but I don't think it's too necessary at the moment. Okay, uh, I guess we could go with trespasser. Okay. I also think uh, you know getting the counter spells out early is good, especially with Ugin in hand. I guess we could try to necromancer right now. Probably just naming to fairy. Uh, okay. Also, getting the hand information is vital. Get the left a card on top. Is it counterspell? Another consider. Okay. And left another card on top. Okay, let's just name the fairy hero. Okay, they had one in hand. So their hand is two lands, charm and typhoon, and then anything they brought in. Uh, rest in peace. Seriously, brought in rest in peace. I wonder why. Have one memory deluge. Okay, so from here they could basically just win with Shark Typhoon, which they have two of. But that's really it. It's either that or, you know, just uh, <laughs> Art of Mingle Tokens. Also, one uh, commit to memory. So one Typhoon, one Charm in hand, two lands, probably just Psycho Charm, yeah. Play one land. This is actually kind of nice here. So next turn we could flip Nissa if it survives and make a token. So yeah, this is Shark Typhoon now just let it resolve. It's only a 3-3 at the moment. We still do have a lot of removal spells. <laughs> but I don't think I wanna use the trophy just yet. Shock in a Hallowed Fountain. Probably just leaving up Vantures? No, they already had four mana extra. So maybe another Shark Typhoon? And. Three plus it dies either way, so I'll just make a token and pass the turn. Okay, so let this resolve, and then after, I will field. It's a bit too on bottom, so it doesn't matter too much if we field here, but I'll, I'll still do it. And, okay, cycle charm.
So I'm going to kill our Nissa, which I think I'll just let happen. You know, I think I'll, I'll actually fight over this. Um, if they do have a counter spell, um, or if you know they wanted to counter it, then they would make way for Ugin. Um, and so that, you know that, that's why I went for it. And I'm just being able to plus this is really nice. And, you know, again, they only have uh, one more wind condition in the form of Shark Typhoon. I guess all of the Storm Giants is a uh, wind condition as well. But we do have Hissing Quagmires for those. Okay. Uh, I'll just pass the turn here. Shock and Fountain again. Pretty interesting. Maybe leaving up the hall. I think I'll try swift ending this. I really don't care about it that much, just this effect. Uh, but if they want to counter it, that's amazing for me. Okay, perfectly fine. Okay, Decay is nice as well. Hot Seas is actually very good here. Absorb. Yep. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. So, we cannot play Ugin this turn because they do have the sensor. So, I'll just pass the turn. bit that. Um, okay, I will... Uh, yeah, I think I'll just kill this in response. Make them really work to kill the Nissa. Yeah, I, I did not see that one coming, to be honest. Yeah, I really should have uh, decayed the Narset. That was a complete misplay, though. Uh, yeah, that was pretty bad. Um, I think I'm just going to start by trying to play out the Garrick. But yeah, I definitely should have decayed the Narset. I don't know what I was thinking. I I, I just totally forgot of that interaction with Narset and commit to memory. It's uh, I don't think we're still. You know, I don't think we're in a bad situation per se, right now. Because you know, their only win condition is the one Shark Typhoon left and this Hall. And being able just to plus Nissa constantly is, you know, seems good. Let's try the Dark Petition. I don't think it'll resolve, but you never know. 
Shark Typhoon. I think here I definitely want to kill this right now. Having the decay already in hand is really nice. And so there's their not their last win condition. This one's their last. But um, you know it it it's getting it's nice having that out of the way. Attack Nissa. So I will block. I can't field of ruin it. I guess we should have fielded uh, in response to them getting it, them activating it. So, making a few misplays, not the end of the world, but you know, still not the best to make these types of things. Aether Ghost is pretty good. Good against Hissing Quagmire. Okay, Forest. Um, yeah, pass the turn. I don't know if they will want to activate the hall, we could field it in response. They get a Narset's Reversal. So the Aether Ghost are in our... our so I'll just put it on top. <laughs> and then play it out again. Memory Deluge. Should have one forest left. Two forests left. Two on top with the scry. I, I wonder what they want to keep on top. Mm. Yeah, so I did forget about you know them shuffling back in cards. Dang. So stupid, I should have definitely decayed the never set when we had the chance. Yeah, so they get to do this. Just push and response. So they I guess they just take the thoughts ease. Yeah, that was pretty stupid, not decaying the Narset. Eh, this kind of sucks now. Mm. 
Now they can just overwhelm us with shark tokens. Another nurse hit. Yes, it was pretty kind of sucks. Just that one mistake really cost us the game. I guess technically we could draw into an assassin's trophy if this resolves, which I think. Okay, it does resolve. So I don't have any more basics. So we can't field to get another clue token. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of mistakes. You're just forgetting Nars that basically is the name of uh, you know the get the match we just played. Um, yeah. So things to learn from this: definitely pay attention to Nars that um, the interaction with commits to memory, and then also just you know her static ability. Um, yeah. I I feel like if we if we won this game, then we we're pretty set to win the next one, um, or you know, sorry, not win the next one, but have a chance at least in the next one, just because we know the layout of their deck with you know getting the ne the necromancer. Um, but yeah, you know, losing one game is fine, but uh, definitely shouldn't have made that mistake. But anyways, I'll see you guys in match four. Okay, here for round four. Probably going to uh, mulligan this hand. <laughs> too few lands, too many big payoffs. But yeah, I think uh, typically blue white control is you know a pretty fair matchup. Um, you know, just making that one mistake by not killing the Narset was pretty troublesome. Um, but yeah, you know, people make mistakes. It's nothing to get flustered about. Um, but you know, I definitely have to keep in mind. And definitely, you know, if you want to be playing at a higher level of, you know, magic, then you're going to have to, you know, pay attention to those really, you know, kind of, uh, you know, that wasn't a minute thing by any stretch of the imagination, but you definitely want to think about um, those types of things more often. Just being really patient is what you got to do. At least that's what I find I have to do more often. I mean, you know, push myself to do that. So, opponent mulligans to 5, which is nice, um, knowing that we have the Thought Seas. They are in the play. Okay, so this is John Sacrifice, probably. Just Rakdos, no, Jund, something. You sh uh, I mean, I guess it's Jund mid range. Uh, they're playing. Usually, the Rakdos mid range decks play this Harvester, um, but not you know Jund sacrifice decks. It's pretty interesting off the bat. Dang, Deadly Dispute was a nasty draw for them. Jeez. It's pretty brutal. That was like probably the perfect draw for them, right? Get them out of their mulligan to an extent. And if we don't draw a land next turn, then we're in pretty bad shape. 
Blood Fountain. That's also very good. I think I'll actually decay it. Because if they play their land, then they can um, get back these two creatures, which is just way too, way too good. This Blood Fountain card is kind of broken, to be honest. Like it's so easy to like kind of disregard it as like ah oh, it's not that not that good, but geez, at least against a fair matchups it's pretty good. Just getting back two creatures for like really little opportunity cost is just so good. So we didn't hit our third land. But having triple trophy is nice. Obviously not hitting our lands is not good though. So in case they draw like a citadel, which I'm guessing there's some sort of sacrifice deck, right? Or some sort of weird matchup of sacrifice mid-range type of thing. So I think I will um, go with the Nissa. I always call it Narset. This leaves us open to uh, them having Citadel, but I think we just you know have to get the lands. They just have lands. Interesting. So it's some sort of like artifact y deck. It's pretty cool. Uh, I guess just discard the languish. That's pretty cool. Uh, just kill it. <laughs> ah, just say. That's nice. I could go away now. <laughs> So I think this deck plays, yeah, I think I've seen this before, I think it plays like Karn, you know, has more of like a, it's still like Sacrifice theme, but has more of an artifact package. Okay, good. Blood Fountain was really good for them. Let's see if they sacrifice it right away. Yep, they get back the uh, Herald and the Harvester. I suppose we just leave up trophy 
for the Herald of English. Not drawing a lot, my answer's pretty disappointing though. Okay. Like if we had drawn a land there, we could have gone Murderous Rider and then Hold Up Trophy, which would have been nice. Interesting, they take the pawn too, so that's reckoning. Huh. Huh. I guess it's just like our cheapest or most efficient spell? Removal spell? Not really sure. And they attack. I think I'm just definitely blocking here. I mean, they didn't choose to, like. You know, they obviously have the Herald in hand, they could just kill it pretty easily otherwise. So before they can step that I will trophy it. Okay, you know cultivate's actually pretty nice. Let's just get two swamps. Yeah, that was a nice draw. <laughs> so now we're looking to draw Dark Petition, Seasons Past, something like that. We are only playing three Dark Petitions in this version of the deck. Um, I have played with four um, in previous versions. Oh jeez. Um, I'm kind of torn between it to be honest. I think three is probably probably correct. Um, you know, it's not too bad to uh, not draw them too f you know frequently. It's a pretty sweet card though, to be honest. Okay. I guess they could be like some sort of jund like artifact treasure ramp deck if they're playing cards like this which is you know f very cool <laughs> to be honest pretty sweet So I'm guessing they just take the trophy, maybe? Yeah. And a deadly speed. Okay, I'm guessing they're gonna take the Heartless Act, you know, if they're doing this, and then leave us with a language that probably can't kill their bigger creatures. Huh, interesting. 
So, what'd they do? Made a blood token? The... Yeah, okay. Ooh, the Garrick is really nice. Yeah, let's just go with that. And this is why I like playing uh, more wind conditions in this deck because you just kind of have spots like that where you know, you know, you play a bunch of your interaction, the boom, 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 boom. You exhaust them of resources, but you know, exhaust yourself of resources as well. And you just kind of left there to do nothing, and then you're drawing. You know, a big payoff like that is just really what you need. Gold Fountain is really good as well. Jeez. It was a great draw for them. Luckily they can't play any of the big cards yet. The big creatures. And we can minus on one of them with the Garrick. So yeah, they do get Harold and Rukthar. Well, I guess they can't put the Herald this turn. Okay. Maybe that's fine. So, we'll have to discard the Languish. Uh... And then most likely just minus on the Herald. Tracker is nice as well. Yep, that's just minus. <laughs> okay, and actually drawing a land is perfectly fine, because we do have the tracker. We do have to be aware of our life total, though, with them having the Rurik Thar in the hand. Okay, well, actually, that was a great draw. Take that, and then we can just swing in with everything. Start pressuring them to find something. They didn't even block? Okay, sure. Yeah, I think this deck is actually becoming to be really promising. Promising, actually. I've been testing out other BGX decks, just like more midrange style decks on my own, and not really having the best success with them, to be honest. Um, but I think this deck, it just have, it has lots of removal for the aggressive decks. You know, mainly, you know, the best one being the Boros one. But it also just has so much, it just, it you know, it could go infinite, you know, with all of its late game potential, you know, Dark Petition, Seasons Past combo. Uh, and, you know, being able to Dark Petition for Necromentia is just amazing against Ascendancy decks. Um, I've just been really liking this deck. I think, you know, the you know general concept of it just makes so much sense. And, yeah. I personally just love it. Uh, yeah, um, I think against this deck, I think I'll bring in the Ugin, bring in the Trackers. Um, I'll bring in the Fourth Thought Seas and a Trespasser. And then probably take out the Languishes because they don't hit the bigger creatures. Maybe like a push or two. Probably don't hit the Necromentia. Cletus probably no. And then yeah, I think that's good.
Okay, um, I think I'm looking this doesn't really do much. And yeah, I'll keep this. Put back the herb work. So I think for round 5, I would like to play against uh, that Boros heroic deck. I can never say that word, heroic. Heroic, there we go. Um, just because I, I really want to see how this deck can function against it. I'm really kind of curious to see if it could keep up. Drawing Thought Seas was nice. Oh, did they Morgan a lot? Jeez. Oh, I'm sorry dude. <laughs> Morgan to 5? Wait, no, that could have been five. Yeah, I'm looking to four. Jeez. That's pretty brutal. And our, with our thought sees, it's even worse for them. Okay, well, if they have Shambling Guest into um, uh, Deadly Dispute, then that's really good. So I think I'll, I'll cultivate here. Um, just for the, just to run up to Onyx a bit quicker. <laughs> but yeah, uh, just having Garrick and Onyx as the top end are just really, really nice in this deck. Just having that lake game inevitability. Even if you don't try your dark petitions or seasons pass, just having them like, kind of like backup win conditions in a sense. Or, you know, to be honest, like just straight up win conditions. Um, especially if, you know, you're dark petitioning seasons past, you're, you know, disrupting your opponent, your opponent can't do anything, but you're, you and yourself are not actually gaining any advantage. And so I think that's where the planeswalkers really help, just kind of like speed up the end of the game. That's why I'm also playing one main deck tracker, um, just because I think having that, you know, main deck threat uh, that we could tutor up if needed uh, is also just really good. And this is also, a, you know, a, a fair. Um, I think we're gonna decay this. You know, a fair wind condition. Uh, you know, she's not you know the best wind condition, but she just definitely can be one. And you know, is at least a threat. Okay, I think here I'm just gonna slam the onyx. And then just start trying to uh, close the game out from here. Hopefully, they don't have any trophies or anything. I think I'll take the Heartless Act. Just hits all of their big creatures. I maybe um, Power Word Kill would be better than Heartless Act, at least in this meta, just because Bor Boros Heroic is very prominent right now, and uh, you know, obviously them being a hero hero <laughs> heroic deck, um, you know. They're gonna get plus one plus one counters, which is not a bit of a non bow. Professor Onyx is also really good because, you know, her Magecraft lets you uh, go through, uh, or sorry, you know, kill your opponent a lot faster if you have the Dark Petition Seasons Past loop. Um, but she also uh, uh, gives fuel for your graveyard for a season's past. Which is great here. So I think here let's just get season's past and then go blank them. 
just exit out of the graveyard. Just so, you know, if they draw a blood fountain, then they can't get back into the game. Maybe we could have Heartless acted there, but I think I just want to save the Heartless act for a, a big creature if they draw it. Okay, so it looks like here they'll be able to kill our Nissa if they put more than one creature for it. Okay, it looks like they will, just to be safe. And I... I think I will kill the, um... Old Rutstein. Uh, just cause... I can't ramp them, give them more creatures. But I think at this point we're in pretty good shape. Just take the extinction event for the season past. Get back a bunch of cards. I guess we just get back a forest. Zero. One. Two. Uh, I'll take the Nissa over the go plank. I think that should be good. Strong lands. So they could take Onyx down to four. Um, <laughs> but next turn we could just play this, uh, and yeah, probably the Trespasser as well. Or you know what? I think we were just able to kill them. Yeah, especially with that. So let's just go Thought Seize. the game. Okay, so pretty interesting matchup, pretty cool deck they had, um, but yeah, pretty easily disrupted by um, our deck, and we got to see the uh, Dark Petition Seasons Past loop, at least a little bit there, which is pretty cool, uh, and just the power of Professor Onyx, and Garrick as well. Um, but yeah, uh, there was match four, and I'll see you guys in match five. Okay, and here for round five, no lands, got a mulligan. Uh, okay, this is keepable. Let's put back. Um, let's put back the languish. I think keeping the uh, dark petition is fine. Gives us some late game potential. Okay, so oh, interesting. So this is a uh, hidden strings. So, um, this is not bad of a matchup. I think game one, it's a bit hard. Uh, just because they do, you know, it's pretty hard for us if we don't draw just our Necromentias. Looks like they have a pretty good start, though. So, I think I'll let this happen. Cannot trophy the Lotus Field because it has hexproof. But I will be able to swift end the Brawl. Which I think I'll just do right now. And pass the turn. 
Okay, so they just had the, um, you know, straight up turn three double lotus field. Which, you know, what can you do about that? Not really much. So here... I honestly kind of just want to leave up trophy and a fatal push. Um, just so next turn we can dark petition with spell mastery. So we could... Uh, Necromancia for maybe like a uh, Appearance of the Abyss or I think Fae of Wishes is actually the correct pick So yeah, let's let's just do that Okay, Emergent Ultimatum. So, uh, okay, this is this must be like a, some sort of alternate win condition. <laughs> I think usually they just fave wishes for a uh, um, second sunrise, or not. That's not what it's called. The uh, seven mana uh, gain six, and then if you cast it twice, you win. Okay, so. Whichever one I choose, they get the other two. So, they pour the pages and peer into the abyss and omniscience. I think I, I should probably give them omniscience and pour. So, because I could just trophy the omniscience. Yeah, I think I'll go like that. And then, in response to this, I will trophy. So they can't play any spells for free. And they don't run any basics, so that's really good to know. Okay, dig through time. So they may have us dead uh, this turn. I think if we do get a turn, or an extra turn, then I think it's pretty likely that we can win. So I wonder if they are going to Emergent Ultimatum again. I wonder if they play multiples. So I don't have any Damping Spheres in the deck or in the sideboard. So that could be a problem. But, you know, obviously we do have the three necromanches in total and then three dark petitions I'm thinking of maybe taking out the Ugin and putting in a uh, damping sphere 
uh, just because it seems, you know, the matchups that Ugin would seem good in, such as, you know, mid range or <clears throat> aggro. You know, typically it's either too slow, you know, in, I guess say against aggro, or it just dies to, you know, say a dread boar in the mid range matchup. And so I think it's uh, a bit too underwhelming. Get back, dig through time, okay. So it seems like they're still trying to find their combo piece, whatever that may be. I'm thinking it's usually if they have wishes, right? Although they're, if they're floating black mana, then I'm not sure what they could have else. One would think it'd just be emergent ultimatum, but I'm not sure. Okay, so there's the Mastermind's acquisition. Most likely getting the, uh, the white card, Second Sunrise, whatever it's called. Approach the Second Sun, I think. Or just Niv Mizzet. Okay. So that we can deal with, fortunately. Like if this be in stage. So if they if they want to win with this plan, so I'm guessing with this there. They have uh, Pure and Thievus, and then they could hit us for a bunch. Um, I'm guessing how this works. That's how this works. Um, so in that case, I think I'll just kill this. I can either kill it, or I can get Necrometra 4 Pure and Thievus. I think I feel safer just killing it though. So it's either Heartless Act or Necromancia. It's pretty interesting though. I feel like if we if we go Necromancia for Peer into the Abyss, um, then they'll I feel like they'll just have some alternate wind condition. So I think I will just uh I guess, you know, either way, it, if they have two forms of wind conditions, then uh, we're in pretty tough shape, but, you know, what can you do? Being stages. Okay, so it's looking like they don't have an untapped spell here. It's looking like we could get out of this somehow. Or at least they it's looking like they don't have any gas. Seasons Pass is a good draw as well. So I think about cultivate play Murder Shredder. Can't play the Seasons Pass this turn with 5 mana, so I'll have to wait till next turn. But we're not looking too bad.
So they have a bunch of mana. But hopefully, nothing too bad to do it with. Or to, you know, use it with. Uh, okay. Wilt? They get wilt? Seriously? What does that do? Well, okay. I guess I'll just seasons passed. I guess I shouldn't have played my land, because we will be getting back a Fabled Passage. But, that's fine. I wonder why they got Wilt. Do they just have nothing else to get? It's kind of strange. So zero, one, two, three, five. And taking the trophy over the, I think we can attack safely here. Taking the trophy over the Heartless Act, um, just because they do have, whatchamacallit, uh, omniscience in their deck. Another granted. Okay. Let's see what they get this time. Perhaps this was just a misclick, maybe? I'm not sure. Thought distortion. Okay. That's that's pretty good. Exile all non creature long land cards from that player's hand and graveyard. Okay. So I guess in that case that's just push the fave of wishes and then we just have to let this happen so they discard two lanes to put it back into their hand we have pretty I guess that I'm kind of confused I mean, maybe maybe this was just a misclick uh, but who knows Thoughtsies, that's nice. So they have Lotus Field and Wilt, let's see what else. I'm pretty sure they didn't play this Lotus Field. Oh, I guess they did. Okay, and let's take the Peer into the Abyss. Yeah, I think we have to let them have the Fae. Um, it's just... Um, It it could go too poorly. Uh, obviously, like you know, when you're whenever you're put into a situation where you have to take, you know, the wind condition or a potential wind condition, you have to take the wind condition, right? I guess period to the abyss isn't a straight up wind condition, but you know, it's it's still uh, still have to worry about it. see what they get though okay so that makes sense um, they can only draw eight cards though they are targeting themselves so they draw eight cards lose eight life I really wonder how they win from here, though. I mean, I suppose it is just like they have to draw into the uh, or use Fae of Wishes again to get approach the second sun, then another peer into the abyss. I think that's usually how they win, typically, right?
they're taking some time thinking though, which is good. Means that they it's more likely that they don't have, you know, a direct one condition and dig through time, so they're looking for something. I mean, they get to look at okay, they chose something pretty quickly. They got to look at their the rest of the cards in their library. Looks like it seems like they're looking for something in specific. I'm still thinking now. Get another vizier. they're trying to do. wonder what they're trying to look for. So they return hidden strings to their hands. Granted. Ah, uh, I see. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, pretty well played by the opponent here. Definitely that, um, uh, thought distortion pretty uh, crucial here so I'm guessing a little Jace and then they have another peer into the abyss Faye wishes Discard Emergent Ultimatum. So it definitely seems like they're wanting something in specific. I'm, if my assumption is right. Oh, a Mystical Dispute? Huh? I thought they would definitely get the Peer. I suppose they can just, uh. Okay, so they. Looks like they can just win now, right? Or they have to draw one more card. So Psycho Alt Wilt. so confused. Okay, there we go. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, sure. Uh, so, that's fine. Uh, we get the game one. We bring in these cards. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, Necromancer obviously is great. And maybe, let's see what we can take out. Take out definitely these Wraths. The Fatal Pushes. Maybe like leave in a couple. Uh, for like, fa for like, uh, hidden strings, ciphering reasons. And then we could bring in the tireless trackers just to increase our clock. Maybe take out a reckoning. And put in another fatal push. Yeah, let's go like that. Probably too slow. It's better. Let's put back, probably just have to put back the onyx, unfortunately. It is notable that they do have a, uh, you know, ten minute under ten minutes on the clock. Let's go to the top. Um, so if we do win this game, then uh, there's a chance that we could time them out. Not really sure why they're playing Wilt, to be honest. Ooh. So we, we could feel the fear in the temple garden because they're not playing any basics, which would put them a turn off of the lotus field. But I think we just want to do our thing. Not really care too much about what they're doing, to be honest. So we want to draw like a dark prediction here, or necromancia. Okay, thought sees is not bad. Okay, let's take the Mastermind's acquisi acquisition. And pass the turn. So we can't field ruin the thespian stage if they decide to copy the lotus field. It seems like there's they acknowledge that line. Scratch the top, not good. Dang, just really not drawing much. 
I mean, I guess that's good against Dith Mizzet, but <clears throat> not the best. Just kind of floating out. Even like a tireless tracker would be nice. this keep a swamp or keep a forest in your library uh, for in case we draw Nissa and I guess for a fabled passage as well <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter though no And no basic. Okay, here we go. So if we draw Dark Petition or Necromentia, just definitely gonna be naming Fey of Wishes, noting that we took the Mastermind's acquisition. I think that's their last card in their deck that they could win with. I mean, I guess technically they could win with Nidmizit. Um, but we do have the Heartless Act for it. Also just um if we're on the play and we have Necromentia in hand, naming Lotus Field with Necromentia is basically just game over from that point. Because they can't really function without Lotus Field. That land of play comes up very often though, because you, know, you have to be on the play, you have to have Necromentia and Double Black in your hand. But it's uh good to know. Omniscience, okay. So we ha do have the trophy for that. Interesting. Dang. So I feel like they only play one of these, so I I'll do this now. But my worry would be they could just get another one with ul the ultimatum. But I didn't want to not do that, so they could just, you know, cast whatever they want with the ultimatum. It would be interesting to try out Splashing Blue in this deck, to be honest, just for some counter spells. And like Jace J for its Prodigy. Okay, um. Let's. Put the Dig Through Time back in their library. Leave them with just the, uh. You know, the least amount of card draw possible. Or I guess card selection. into the abyss themselves, draw 10, lose 10.
So it looks like we're going to lose this game, but I think it just came down to not drawing our Necromenches or Dark Petitions. It kind of flooded out there a bit, um, at least in game two. Um, I do think I would like to put a Damping Sphere back in the sideboard. Um, I took I took them out just because Hidden Strings has not been that, uh, uh, you know, uh, popular recently. Uh, and, you know, aggro decks have been really popular, just trying to get under these types of combo decks. Um, but I think, you know, at least we'll have one slot open for it, for Damping Sphere, that is. Just so we have it, and then we could also search it up for dark, with Dark Petition. So red mana means, uh, okay, so they can get back Omniscience, fine. Um, that means, I guess they could just play anything now, but we can't kill the Nivmus it if they, if they have it. But with Omniscience out, it's pretty, one would, you know, imagine it'd be pretty easy for them to win. And they do have Mystical Dispute up. Okay, it looks like they're just going to win with Jace's again. So we can't kill this in response to their next card. Not that it does much, but... It may hinder them to an extent. Okay, yeah, I'm going to just counter it. That makes sense. And so now it looks like they will probably just win from here. Sixteen cards in hand. Yeah, I think they got it. I'll give it to them. Well, you know, I would say that that was a pretty successful league. Um, obviously, um, you know, three and two is not such a um, impressive standing, but I think you know, being a mid range tech, that is where you want to be typically. So we lost against blue white control and hidden strings. Um, Hidden Strings game or a matchup definitely is winnable. I would like to um, take out this Ugin, putting a Damping Sphere in the sideboard. Um, just so we have a bit more game against that matchup. And you know, maybe we just want four Necromancer, maybe? Because honestly, in like the Ascendancy and Hidden Strings matchup, we really just want to be trying this like so much and in multiples it's you know often preferred to have multiple of them so let's take out noxious grass because i have been too impressed with it and get that fourth necromancia in the 75 and then let's take out one heartless act and put in a power word kill just because um, I feel like with these two mana removal spells, we want to have some sort of diversity. Um, you know, like I previously mentioned with uh, uh, Boros Heroic, Heroic uh, being pretty popular, Heartless Act is not the best against them. Um, so, you know, we want some sort of diversity in a re removal suite. But other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with this deck. Um, I think, I think the 75 is pretty good. I think that was, that league went, went pretty well in my opinion. Blue white control is pretty tough. Um, but yeah, I think the only change that I would make is maybe adding the 4th Dark Petition back in. Um, just thinking of what I would take out, maybe just Blood Chief's Thirst. Uh... Maybe a fatal push. Because I feel like I was kind of missing out on this card. I don't know. I think. Hmm. 
Yeah, you know, I will take out the Blood Chiefs first, just because we can't Dark Petition for it and play it thereafter, even with Spare and Last Read. So I think I will put in the Dark Petition, the fourth Dark Petition for that. But yeah, um, I think I'll definitely record another video with this deck. I'm just trying to really uh, uh, hone it, really make it good. Um, but other than that, um, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, as much as I did, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. Thank you.